Hi there, welcome to Scrap and Coffee. It's that time of the year, Christmas time, so let's make a Christmas project. For my Christmas project, I'm going to create a chipboard uh, covered, so a hardcover trifold uh, mini album. And I'm going to use the Christmas collection by Cardabella Paper Company. I'm really excited about this one. It's a bit of a country home, country living feeling. So we'll see how that's going to turn out. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use my We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch. Or this is actually the one to three punch board. But an envelope punch board will be uh, perfectly fine as well. For, I'm going to use this one a lot uh, on the inside of the album for pockets, flaps, that sort of thing. So I'm really excited about that. So let's get started with our cover. So the album that we are going to make is going to measure eight and three quarters by five and three quarters. And like I said, it's going to be a trifold. So I have three pieces in that size. And I have two spine pieces that measures eight and three quarters by one inch. So this is what we are going to wrap in our uh, cardstock. And for that, I have two pieces that measure 10 and 3 quarters by 12 and one is not going to be enough so that's why two we are going to attach these pieces together so let me make some room up here for attaching those two pieces together i've made a little pencil mark at half an inch so i have it with the three 10 and 3 quarters lying up and the 12 inch in width and then i've placed my score tape in between the cut edge and that pencil mark and then we can line the other piece we are going to stick it on top of that so again the ten and three quarters is the height and i'm going to use my pencil mark to guide me to get it on there as straight as i possibly can and then my bone folder we are going to make sure it really sticks So now it's long enough to wrap all of our pieces and we are want to make sure that when we line up our pieces that our overlapping of the paper is not going to be in the space in between our chipboard or really close to the edge of one of the pieces. So we want it to be at least one to one and a half inches away from one of the edges of the chipboard. So we are going to roughly estimate where that overlapping will be when I'm going to place all my pieces with a little bit of spacing in between and then I can see that if I go one inch from the side what I want eventually is going to be perfect because then my overlapping will be a little bit over the center of the second large piece so that will be totally fine I've already placed my tape my double-sided tape on my chipboard pieces so I don't have to do that anymore you can use wet glue if you want, just what you prefer. And I'm going to draw a little guideline on my cardstock now at one inch from the bottom. I like that. It helps me to get my uh, chipboard pieces on there straight. Also because I've already cut it down to size for a one inch border on the top and the bottom. I don't want to go too crooked on my placing. So... And I'm also, because I know I just figured it out that that will be fine, I'm going to make a one inch mark at the left side. And that will help me to place the pieces on there straight. So let's stick that first piece down. Remove all those stay backings. And I just like to give my chipboard a good coverage with double sided tape. And you just do it however you like to do it. You can use a sheet of double-sided tape and just cover the whole thing. You can just do the edges. But I like it to have a really good, nice stick to it. So now I'm going to line this piece up with those two pencil marks that I've made. I'm just taking my time, get it on there as straight as I can. Don't rush yourself, but also don't 
make it too hard for yourself. If you go off a little bit, that's not a big deal. So now we need to place one of the spine pieces and we need to have a little bit of spacing in between those chipboard pieces. Now, some people like to uh, stick two pieces of chipboard together and use that for spacing. Some people eyeball it. I like to use some tape and I'm going to use a tape that I buy at Walmart. It's I won't recommend it for the construction of your whole album, but for this it's fine. It's not a very strong tape. Um, they sell it as uh, 1 8 of an inch, but it's uh, actually more 3 16 just under a quarter actually. And that's for me, it feels like it's the perfect spacing for my album. So I'm going to place it, lining it up with the top of the chipboard and just place it right next to it. You don't have to be perfect. And then... I will stick my spine piece, lining it up with that bottom pencil mark that I've made and up against that tape. And I see that I've placed my tape a little bit crooked so I'm just going to uh, depend on the line that I've made on the bottom and then I'm going to repeat it I'm going to place another strip of tape up against that spine piece give it a little burnish just use my finger for that and then I'm going to place the second large piece so i'm going to stick all my pieces down and when i've done that i will be back with you okay so i've placed all five of my chipboard pieces and now i have a little bit too much cardstock on this side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, make a pencil mark one inch from the end of the chipboard on my cardstock and I'm going to cut everything that's extra away. So I'm going to get my paper cutter up here. It won't be in camera, but I just do it quickly. Simply because it won't fit on my uh, on my desk. That's cut away. The next step that I'm going to take is I'm going to place a double sided tape on the perimeter of my chipboard and also on the perimeter of my cardstock. So I'm going to show you on the bottom of both my cardstock and my chipboard how I do it. And then I will finish it up off camera just to save some time. So now the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to remove the tape backings of the spacings part. But I'm not throwing them away. I save them if I can keep them in one piece. I think I placed the chipboard on top of there a little bit. Let's see if I can get it. Well, it's not a big deal if I can't get it off completely, but. It's fine, just like that. So I save them for later just to protect the tape a little bit from dust. Then for the chipboard, I'm going to use a quarter of an inch tape. You can use whatever size you have or like to use. And I'm going to start at the corner here and without pulling too much onto my tape placing it onto that bottom part then in my spacings I'm going to use my finger to really get it in there and then loosely place it on the next part of the chipboard again put my finger put the tape in that spacing part and lining it up 
with the bottom of the next piece without pulling on it too hard. And just complete that whole bottom row just like this. And I will show you in a second on an in another angle what I did with that tape in those spacings. Just give that a really quick burnish. So you can see it on camera a little bit over here that it's a little bit indented. I really place the tape in there. And why I do it is because we are when we are going to bend on these spaces, then I want my tape to have that um, wiggle room. For the bottom, nothing crazy, but I'm not going to line it up with the corner. I'm going to start like half an inch inwards from my chipboard and end half an inch inward from my chipboard because I'm going to cut away the corners and I don't want to place any tape on there that I'm going to cut away anyway. That's just a waste of your really expensive double-sided tape. So if we can save on it, then we are trying to do so. So I will still be cutting some of it away, but... If I would have placed it all the way to the end on both sides and I would have thrown away like three inches of tape that I don't want to throw away. So I'm going to place tape on the whole perimeter and then I will be back. Okay, so I've placed the tape uh, on all four sides. Next step we are going to take is we are going to cut away our corners and I'm going to make a pencil mark. Uh, I've done three corners already just to save some time, but I have this, um, yeah, I call it a geometric ruler. Um, it helps me to uh, get a 45 degree angle and I'm just eyeballing it a little bit that I'm staying away from my chipboard corner. Just a little bit. Yes, so... Get that up a little closer so I have a little bit of uh, cardstock. I then didn't make the pencil mark straight up to that corner of the chipboard. I stay away from it a little bit. So let's cut those corners away. Always with making a cover, especially with a trifold or a larger album, you have quite a large piece to work with. So now I am going to pre-fold my cardstock around the chipboard just by lifting it up onto my workspace a little bit. You can also um, if you like to do it, you can, well, this is not really going to help, but you can make a little score mark with your bone folder before you pre-fold it. Most of the time I don't really feel it necessary. I'm going to do this a little bit off camera, but because it's a little bit too big. So that's pre-folded. So now we are going to... Um, stick the cardstock around the chipboard and I'm also going to use a little bit of my art glitter glue I'm going to put that on the edges uh, because I think it helps with making a really nice straight edge on the top of your uh, cover so I'm going to remove the double sided tape on the top and on the two sides and I think I didn't really burnish these yet so let's do that quickly and I was also able to remove that other piece of tape backing completely, so. Let's get this off. Like that. And we're also going to remove the tape backing of the cardstock on the top. And I always start with the longer sides. You can also start with the shorter sides. Just 
Um, I like it when you, if I do the shorter side first and do both short sides and then cover the long sides because that gives you a nice equal corner on all the four corners. And when you do like a longer one and then a shorter one, then your corners will be different. I'm going to put not too much, just a little bit on that edge. And like I said earlier, if you just want to use wet glue for this part, that's totally fine as well. It's whatever you prefer to do or what you are used to do. So now I'm just going to fold this over and I'm going to use my bone folder. You have to work your fibers. Don't go too fast. Don't try to pull on your cardstock. That will make your album bend. Well, maybe I, you can go a little bit faster than I go, but I just like to take my time in this part. And then I'm going to use my fingers to stick it onto the chipboard. And then again with my bone folder, just make it really, really st stick on there. So that's the first side. I'm going to turn it around and do the other long side, so we move the tape back in from this part. And from the cardstock. Then again, place a little bit of the wet glue. And this art glitter glue is a really good strong glue, so I just need a little bit of it. But it dries quickly, so I'm closing it up. And again, I'm going to repeat what I just did on the other side. Really take my time to make that fold on that cardstock. And I'm just going to use one finger to hold it in place, but I'm not pulling on it. And just with every stroke, I try to make the bend a little bit further. Just push down on it a little bit more. And then when it's almost there, just use my fingers to stick it down. And then again, burnish that onto that chipboard. So now for the shorter side, we are going to do the same thing. But bef before we do it, we are going to tuck in these corners here where the cardstock is overlapping the chipboard we want to make a nice straight corner so we are going to fold that inwards let me see if i can get that in camera for you what i did i'm going to do that on both sides and this is just something one time it goes really good the other time it's not so pretty it takes a lot of practice and even then not your corners are not always going to be perfect but that's it's a handmade product so that's fine i'm fine with it as long as my chipboard is completely covered i hate it when i have naked corners and that's what you will get if you don't leave enough space between your chipboard and your cardstock so again i'm folding it in Pushing down on it with every stroke that I make, not pulling on it. And then with the shorter sides, I don't even really need my fingers to push down on it. And then I will show you a nice straight corner. This one is a little less perfect, but still looks good. So we are going to repeat those steps on the other side. I'm going to tuck this in. And also on the bottom. Again, a little bit of that white glue. And as you can see, it's really, it's really a little bit. I don't want it to ooze out or anything, so. And again, I'm going 
want to make that fold. And again, those nice straight corners. Okay, so the tape backings that I've saved and one was ripped, but I'm going to just loosely place them back on there just for a little protection until we can place our hinges on there. Just don't want it to catch dust and stuff. That's why I do it. It's not necessary, but... Oh, I forgot we need to burnish the little spacings. Let's see. Yeah, this one got ripped, but... Okay, so let's burnish on these spacings really quick. Well, not really quick, but... Because we want to do it right. I always do it on, my, uh, on the left side of the cover. I'm placing my fingers underneath the cover and I'm going to with a little bit of pressure press the cardstock into that little spacing that we have and because I have that tape there let's remove this one for you quick the cardstock will really stick onto that tape so I'm really burnish it in there do it on the top as well not lifting it up too much just my fingers underneath there and then when I've burnished it then I can slightly lift it a little bit we are going to place our binding on top of it so we done that then we are going to give it a, a good burnish from top to bottom and really make that fold happen work those fibers of the cardstock and also on the top other two i'm going to turn it around because i like to work on this side of the cover So we will work on that after we place the bindings a little bit more because it's still a little stiff now, but that's fine. So I'm going to uh, set this aside and then we are going to work on our hinges. Okay, quickly cleaned out my workspace there and now we are going to make our hinges for uh, our trifold album. And we are going to make uh, two binding systems that each have one hinge. And for that I've got... Uh, Two pieces that measure four and a half in width and eight and a half in height and I've made two three score marks on that at one and three quarters two and a quarter and two and three quarters so this is the dented side of that and on the back of that piece on the bumpy side I've placed a double-sided tape and it's really hard to see in the light but on camera I've placed a tape in between um, two score um, score marks that I've made and then you have another half inch that has no tape on it so now I'm going to fold towards the bumpy side on the middle score line that I've made and I'm going to burnish that fold open it up and then I'm going to remove the tape backing and what this will do and we're going to fold it up again and then we are going to stick those two half inches together and that will be our actual hinge so give that a good burnish now I like to do it because it's easy because I only have one inch you're not always capable of doing this in this position but I'm going to place tape on uh, my hinge and um, I have now here the folded uh, side and then I have a score line here at half an inch and I also I have the same thing on this side and I'm going to place tape between that uh, folded over edge and that score line and I'm going to stay as close as I can to the folded edge and 
this is three eighths of an inch tape and that it's really my favorite size tape to use for construction of an album it fits perfectly in between your half inch uh, score lines and in this case when we stay really close to that folded edge we have a little under one eighth of an inch spacing between the tape and the score line I think it's quite hard to see with the light but on the black so also in this position I'm going to taper on that half inch inch and I'm going to start a little under where my tape starts and I'm going to cut to the folded side just like that and now I'm going to fold on those two score lines on both sides just fold back on them and give it a burnish so I think it's easier to place the tape when it's the piece is still flat than after you uh, fold it on those other score lines and it's standing up and you can do it because it's just one inch if you have several inches on your piece then you, know, it's, you can do it but it's a little bit harder so that's our hinge really easy comes together quickly just because it's only one and now I'm going to place tape on the back of this um, binding system and you can uh, use small sizes of tape uh, whatever you like I like to use a good amount of tape on my inches again because when you are going to use your page you are going to pull on it and you don't want it to come off of your cover so the most important thing that I do when I'm placing tape on my binding is I'm going to make sure that I cover the spacing where those two pieces come together so I'm going to uh, make sure that this is covered with one piece of tape now I have a, a two inch roll that I'm going to use and I'm going to place it in the middle and then I'm going to fill up the edge with another side of tape uh, but you can use uh, whatever side you have it's also something uh, you can use wet glue of course and you can also use the combination of double sided tape and wet glue I'm going to show you on one how I place my tape and these bigger rolls of tape they are they are a bit expensive but it gives you a large amount of coverage and they are really helpful in this uh, kind of thing so I'm not completely straight but that doesn't matter to me as much and then I just get my smaller uh, cutting pad up here and with my utility knife I'm going to cut it off and then I have that middle part is now completely covered and now I'm going to place some tape here on the edges as well and again I'm going to use my 3 eighths of an inch tape for that and it's important that you have your your perimeter covered completely or almost completely like I have some little spacing here now that I haven't got covered but I want it to be covered so what I'm going to do that's because I I've placed my two inch tape pretty crooked I'm going to remove this tape back in here don't throw it away and I'm going to place another piece of my 3 inch tape on there so it will be overlapping a little bit and then I'm going to place this tape backing back on there for now and I will do the same thing on this side now you just you don't want to go short on your tape on your binding system you want it to have a really good coverage I know I want to save tape wherever I can but on this part you just I feel you can't you need to cover it as good as you can so I'm going to do the same thing to the other one 
and when we when I come back we are going to attach this to our cover okay so my hinges are covered up with tape and we are ready to attach them onto the cover so I'm going to remove these tape backings now rid of those and now we are going to place them in here and now I'm going to uh, I'm not just going to eyeball them in the center I really have to think about where I want these hinges because so if I'm closing my album up I don't want the pages to bump into each other so they have to be a little bit off center but I'm also going to make um, a piece here that has a little gusset so I have to make sure that it's far enough away from this side as well so I'm going to place this hinge um, centered, I think. It's a one inch spine, so I'm going to place the hinge uh, at half an inch away from the middle part. And then this hinge, if I placed it centered as well, then they would bump into each other when I close my album. So I'm going to place this one a little closer to the right side, about three quarters of an inch from the left and a quarter of an inch from the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little pencil mark. Uh, the album is eight and three quarters. The binding system is eight and a half. And that gives me, let's get rid of this tape overhanging here. We don't want that. That gives me a quarter of an inch on the top and the bottom spacing. So I'm going to make a little pencil mark at a quarter from the bottom. Slightly just going to help me to. Oh, you need to have your pencil out, that would be helpful. Just make a light pencil mark from a quarter, a quarter from the bottom, and a quarter from the top. And um, I'm just eyeballing it, let it center. And I'm going to have my hinge standing up, and then I will just eyeball it. So I'm going to remove all these tape backings here. You can also remove um, just a little part of your tape backing if you feel that's safer. I'm just going to do it like this and hopefully I get it on there straight. We'll see. Okay, so my inch is standing up, I have my pencil marks, and I'm just eyeballing the center of the hinge onto the spine. And I see that I didn't make my pencil marks really good, so I'm just eyeballing it, placing it on there, and I'm going to rub my finger just next to my spine. Then I'm going to get my bone folder, and I'm going to fold it into that spacing a little bit on both sides and as you can see it isn't stuck down on this side yet and also here I haven't put any pressure on the sides of it and after I've done that then I will make sure it's stick down all the way So now I'm working on this anyway, so I'm just going to really fold into that spacing, work the fibers of my cardstock here. And while I'm doing it, I'm lifting up my cover further and further in. Work that spine and then I'm going to do the other one as well. And we might, you might have to do this in a later stadium again, because you feel like it's still a little stiff. But also, when you use it, it will you will break down that fiber as well. Maybe I should have done this one first to make it a little easier for myself. But okay, so let's let's attach the other one. Again, I'm making that little pencil mark at a quarter from the bottom. And then a quarter of an inch from the top. So now I'm going to place the hinge uh, 
closer to this side than to that side. So they are offset in the album. And I always like to take my time on building uh, my cover and my hinges because it's the base of your project and you just I just want it to be nice and sturdy. So I'm not rushing myself. Just making sure it's there to last. So again, I'm lining it up with that pencil marks and now I'm making sure it's a little off-centered on the spine. I'm also trying to see if it's lined up with that other hinge uh, as good as I can. I don't want to be too close to that side. So yes, let's do it like that. Okay, again. Oh, it's coming off. And like I said, I just like to take my time. I'm not going to rush myself. My fingers, and then. Going into that crease. Also on this side. Let's give that cardstock a little bit of room to go in there before I stick it down to my cover. And then I can burnish it all the way down. So I'm going to turn around the album again because I like to work on this side. Now I'm going to do the one that's closest to the center first because I think it's a little bit easier for me to lift up the cover see how that's so much easier than the other one and now I'm going to do the one on the outside and slightly lift it up as I'm going And again, because there is tape underneath here, that cardstock will really stick to it. And I just, I like it. And if you don't want it, or if you don't like it, then you don't do it. So now what I like to do is I like to turn my cover around to the outside. And again, with just my finger, I'm not going to put any pressure on my bone folder here. I'm just going over that crease on the outside. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm not putting any pressure on my bone folder, like I said. That's it. So just to make sure that I have a really good stick on this. Again, give it a really good burnish. On everything. And now... Um, it's all the same, only your hinges are are not attached the same. So for me, the hinge that's placed on the center, that's for me is the right side of the album. And I'm going to close it up with the right side first and then the left in left side. And now it's because it's all clinging onto each other, it's still a little stiff, but that will be fine in the, after we've completed it, everything. We can fold this in. That hinge is in the way now a little bit, but like that. And then we have a nice trifold album. And we will be, I think I'm going to use magnet closure for this one now. So the last thing that we need to do is, what I like to do, is cover up uh, all three sides with a piece of black cardstock. Uh, you can do this with pattern paper if you like. Uh, that's totally fine as well, but I just like it. When I have it completely covered in the black and I'm going to work on it from there. So I have three pieces that measure um, five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to place one piece on all three of my uh, cover pieces. And I'm going to line it up with my hinge. And then I'm going to stay away one eighth of an inch away from the, from the side. So I've placed tape on here already. So these pieces measure eight and a half by five and a half. I didn't write it down on there. 
because I'm afraid it will show and I don't want that. When the project is complete, I will have a cutting guide on my website, scrapandcoffee.com. But because I haven't figured out every detail in the album, I don't have a cutting guide ready for you yet. So I'm just trying to push down on this hinge a little bit so it's not in my way. I have my fingers underneath here so it's not sticking to my page. And I'm just lining it up with that hinge on the top. And on the bottom and then I will show you it, it's not always working out like that but the corner of my piece that I've placed is lining up with the where you have made your fold on your cover on your wrap you see that so that also helps me to get it straight away from that edge so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and I'm turning it around now but I, when I'm starting to put my pages in and I have to really consider on what's my right side and what's my left side in this album. And no big deal if we do it on the wrong side just as long as your pockets are not upside down and your embellishments on the cover aren't upside down. And it's not a big deal if we uh, accidentally do it the, the wrong page on the wrong side. But. So again I'm going to do the same thing. Just holding my fingers underneath it. I'm going to push on this hinge a little bit so it's not in my way too much. Just taking my time, eyeballing it to line it up with that hinge. On the top and on the bottom. And when I think I'm good, I'm going to remove my fingers and stick that piece down. And make sure it's got a really good stick. And I really need to get myself a Teflon bone folder. Because this one, I don't know if you can see it, but it's giving a little bit of white when I go over it on my black. And the last piece and then our base for the project is done we can start with making our base pages and our add-ons so it will be pockets flaps some surprising elements well i think surprising elements that i have in mind so hopefully it turns out as nice as i think it will And I really enjoy the construction part of the album, but I, it's always a joy to me to see it come together with the patterned paper. Because that is what makes your album your album. You decorate it the way you want it. 